God is alive and he's still working today. And God fulfills his word. Look at his word. In the beginning, God created man in the image of God. And we are created to be with God. God is a spirit who is with us. That means that's the image of God. You simply have that image and automatically the blessing of the deep and conquering falls. However, in Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve broke God's covenant, separated from God, and thus fell into sin. Separation. So life itself becomes suffering and worries and problems. And everything they do just brings more problems. Because spiritually they're orphans. Look at Ephesians 2 1, it says we're dead in transgressions and sin. And from that point on, everything we touch becomes an idol. First Corinthians 10 20 it says that even the sacrifices of pagans are given to demons. We sacrifice to that, and all it does is bring even more destruction to the third and fourth generations. However, no matter how hard they struggle, they'll never find peace. So mentally they're afflicted. always at rest and always anxious, always stressful, then physically also you'll face disease. And you see the various diseases that are given, some because of physical cause in the world, some because of evil spirits. But more and more I see that all are given by influence of demons. Not all is possession, but the force of darkness are bringing destruction through that. And then one day we face death, judgment, and hell. Hebrews 9.27 says everybody will face this judgment before God. We give this as an inheritance to our children. Our children face the same problems, most likely even worse than what we face. Exodus 20. However, there is nothing that mankind can do to come out of this problem. None of mankind's efforts will solve this problem. And that's why in Romans 5.8 it says, While we were still sinners, Christ demonstrates his love for us. God demonstrates that love, and that is Christ. And Jesus being how Christ came into the world, meaning Christ being what he did for us. Therefore, Jesus is Christ. And he became the way for us. He freed us from all of our sins, past, present, present and future, and even destroyed the power of the devil that we could have victory. He took out of this, this problem. On the cross, he made that way for us to meet God. And now all we have to do is believe. John 1 12 says, Those who believed and those who received him, he gave the right to become children of God. Romans 10 9 and 10 says, If you believe in your heart and confess with your lips, you are justified and you are saved. Again in verse 13, it says, All who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So all we have to do is believe. We simply heed 
did everything while we were still sinners. He just says to leave. The moment you do leave, you become children of God. Now God's Holy Spirit in us. And that Holy Spirit you know, indwells with us forever. John 16, 26 and 27, that same Holy Spirit guides us. It says he will teach us everything. And that's how amazing the guidance of the Holy Spirit is. we pray, it's not just that we can receive answers to prayer, it's we have an identity where we are meant to always receive answers. John 14, 14, Jesus says, if you pray anything in my name, I will do it for you. 14, 17, he says, just be in my word, just hold on to the promise, and you'll get whatever you even ask for, whatever you desire. course of darkness cannot stand in front of this prayer because we have authority to bind them. And again, there are so many verses concerning this, but Luke 10, 19 says, I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. None of the power of the enemy will overcome you. And also, angels mobilize when we pray. I have not seen them. I do not know exactly what they do, but Revelations tells us that uh, they run errands to bring us answer to prayer. Hebrews says that they are ministering spirits to those who will be saved, indicating that when we hold on to God's covenant and faith and pray, these angels are at work. And have the citizenship of heaven. Philippians 3.20 says our citizenship is in heaven, hope is in heaven, which means while we're in the world, we'll enjoy the background of heaven and then we'll go there. And he will make us witnesses. So it's something that God promises. He promises that if you simply hold on to the covenant, He will give power. He will make us witnesses. It's not that we, you know, the only thing we have to do is believe that. In order to get that answer, you have to know the promise of God and hold on to that promise in faith. 